Well, hey, what's up? How's it going, everybody? Um, <laughs> I wanted to do a little video. I had a company contact me. If, let's just say, for instance, you don't own a Fuji, you know, like I do. I shoot strictly Fuji. Um, I know there's a lot of people out there that do. And one of the main reasons that we do is because of the Fujifilm simulations. Um, I, you know, aside from the Fuji colors, Fuji colors are, are hard to match. Uh, Nikon's probably for me personally is probably the next best thing to a, uh, Fuji would be the, the Nikon uh, cameras, but the Fuji colors mixed in with the film simulations and, and something that Fuji has really spent a lot of time and effort into uh, perfecting, you know, and, and, and that's what draws a lot of people to Fuji. And you can use them in video uh, photography, which is mostly used in photography, but you can use, you can record video straight, you know, straight to your camera with, with a film simulation. You don't have to use F-Log and all this other stuff. Let's just say you don't have Fuji. What do you do? If you want that film look, you want that cool film look that all the kids, the cool kids are liking these days. Uh, matter of fact, some of them are shooting film to get the film look. But uh, what would you do? What, what would you possibly do? What could you use? Well, you could go buy some presets if you use Lightroom. And, uh, and I'm sure Capture One has their own little preset thing. And uh, all these other companies out here that that offer software, uh, have something, they have some kind of preset, something available for you to use to kind of simulate or emulate as close to those film simulations as you possibly can get. Uh, Fuji is just a lot more detailed and you can actually tweak those yourself to go even deeper and further than what they give you in camera. Yeah. You know, just the basic, uh, however many you can, I forgot how many there are even available in uh, the X-T5, X-H2 series cameras. What are you gonna do? I mean, you, you could go through the list and you could try to tweak your camera profiles and you could do all that. Cause then you, you, and you know who I'm talking about. I'm talking about Sony, Canon, and Nikon. Um, there is something you can use. Now, if you shoot a lot of video and you use uh, various video editing software out there, you've probably heard of Dehancer and you know, I've heard of it, but I don't do a lot of videos. So I, I've never really used it. The company reached out to me and said, Hey, do you want to test out, you know, one of our many programs that we have the film simulation programs? And I said, sure, why not? But I don't shoot video. Um, it would have to be a fo photography only type situation. And they're like, Oh yeah, we've got it for Lightroom and capture one. I'm like, Oh, okay. Well, I mean, I shoot Fuji but I don't really need it, but I do have some old files. I've shot Canon, I've shot Sony, I've shot Nikon. Um, I could try it out and see just to see, you know, how well it works. And, and those of you that have shot film in the past and me not being one of them, uh, aside from disposables and stuff like that, uh, you know, the, the effort and what it took in order to, you know, working in a dark room with these images to get the specific look that you wanted. And you had to buy film, rolls of film specifically for like Portra 400. You had to buy Acros. You had to buy all of these different types of film to get that look that you were, you know, trying to achieve. And, and you had to go even further in the, in, in the dark room. You had to know how to develop those images in order to get that look that you're, you know, that you want. Uh, Cause certain photographers had certain looks and, and you could go back through history uh, of the old, you know, the film photographers, the ones that had a look and they always developed their film the same exact way. Well, now you have a way to do that. If you own Sony or Canon, you don't have to go out and look for presets. You don't have to go out and Google search. And, and by the way, Dehancer isn't paying me for this video. Um, I don't have a code for you to get a discount. I specifically turned that down. I don't want to, I don't want to be influenced in any way, shape or form. I just wanted to try it out to see is this something, if I didn't own Fuji, if I didn't shoot Fuji, would I invest in it? So let's check it out and see. All right, here we are um, in Dehancer Photo version 2.3.3. And we are activated currently. 
here is going to be uh, your sidecar here on the right side is going to be all the different ways, uh, all the different adjustments. And these will pop up once we have a photo in here to edit. Um, and then I'll, I'll, same thing over here. This is going to be where all of your film simulations are. This is your starting point. So you have Fujifilm, Velvia 100. You've got all these different, I mean, some really cool Kodak Eastman Double X 5222, Kodak Arrow Color 4, 125, Ektar 25, Portra 400 plus Endura. I mean, you've got all these different choices. I mean, it's just, it's, you just, you, you'll never run out of choices for, uh, like I said, you might want to use this with, with the, it might be easier to do this than actually do it inside your Fuji camera, but, uh, it's hard to say. Uh, but anyway, we're in, we're actually in settings. When you open this up, you're not going to see that. So you hit the wheel and then this is where you're going to enter your license and everything. If you have an account, you'll do all that. Uh, but let's go ahead and uh, go to dehancer.com because I want to show you what happens. Uh, when you when you go in here, so uh, for video, uh, if you own or if you currently use DaVinci Resolve, you might already know who Dehancer Pro is. Uh, Four hundred dollars uh, is what that is, and then you've got all these other different things you can buy add-ons for your video. But we're talking about photo, so let's go to photo. And the, the nice thing about Dehancer is, uh, and they call it Dehancer Film, you know, I, uh, plug-in. And uh, it's for all Photoshop, Lightroom Classic, Capture One, and Affinity Pro. You just buy one for all the different, all these different programs, which is nice. So you don't have to buy a separate one for each and every software, different software. Like I have different versions of, of software that I, that I have on my computer right now. I've got on one, which on one is not listed as on one of these. And who knows, it might be in the future. Uh, but 200 bucks is, is what it's going to cost you. If you wanted to buy this now, there's a special, the, the only real downside that I see to this program is it's a little bit difficult. If you're not that great at, uh, figuring out, figuring out how to <laughs> upload, download things and activate things. And there is a specific way you have to do this, depending on what chip you have. I run a Mac, so I can only speak about Mac. Uh, Mac obviously used to run Intel chips. Apple used to have Intel chips. Now they've gone completely over to their M1 and M2 chips. Um, so there is a specific way. If you click on help right there, it gives you everything you could possibly need. Everything you need to make sure that you get the correct program actually installed on your computer. So we're going to go to Lightroom plugin. And what it's going to do, it's got a nice long PDF and it tells you everything you possibly could need to know about installing this as a plugin. Once you install this, it doesn't automatically jump into your Lightroom plugin menu. And, and I'm going to show you that here in a second. Uh, but you go ahead, you got to, first of all, you have to make sure you download the correct one. Uh, the x86 is for your Intel based Macs and the ARM64 is for the Apple Silicon. So, Make sure you download the correct one when you purchase this, or if you do the trial, make sure if you're using an M1 or M2 chip, ARM64 file is the one that you want. And you'll see it up here. You have all ARM64, x86. Uh, you you got to make sure you're downloading the correct one and installing it because it might cause some problems. So, and it tells you everything, any kind of issue that you might have, it's going to tell you how to resolve that. Now, here's what you have to do to get this uh, working well with your Adobe, Adobe, Adobe Lightroom Classic for Mac OS. And it tells you detail right here. So, but what we're going to do is we're just going to open up old Lightroom here and we're going to do it ourselves. Now, I'm only recording a certain portion of my screen, so you're not going to see me go off to the side here and click under Lightroom Classic and click under Settings, and it's going to bring up our settings. Now, I'm already in external editing. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to choose and then we're going to find, we are going to find our, uh, where, where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we? Dehancer Lightroom plugin, Dehancer Lightroom plugin. And I believe, yeah, that's, that's the one. So Dehancer Lightroom plugin, we're going to choose. Now in file format, TIFF, 
You do have a choice, TIFF, PSD, or JPEG. We're going to use TIFF. We're going to use 16 bits. You must use sRGB. So again, remember, you must use sRGB um, when you do this. 300 on the resolution. No compression, I would suggest. And the preset's just going to say custom. You can actually um, uh, name that, I would imagine. And uh, that's that. So what we're going to do is we're in, we're in this file here. This is a Nikon Z6 file, 24-70 f4. Just a random photo that I never did anything with because the vehicles were in there. And uh, we're going to right-click. We're going to go to, to edit in. And there it is. We just installed it. Uh, or we actually activated it inside of Lightroom. So we're going to edit in Light and Dehancer. And of course, it comes up with all. Same thing as before. If you made any edits, it's going to, if you have that checked, as obviously it's going to edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments. Um, I, I don't know. I think I wouldn't adjust it until I apply the film simulation if I had to, uh, because you can do so much inside of Dehancer already. You know what I mean? So uh, we're going to click on edit and it should bring up the Hanser. Uh, well, we already had it open, so we need to close out this, and where are we at? So close out that, we're already, there we go. So now, if this was closed, it would open this up into this dialog right here. So, let me get this all straightened out so everything is nice and cozy. Let's minimize old Lightroom, and we're gonna we're gonna make this big. You make this as big as you want. I would suggest making it as big as possible on your screen so that you have this a bigger window to work with. You have a histogram down here at the bottom. Now, um, automatically it has last edits. If you if you want to, let's say you're ed, uh, batch editing and you just want to use the last edits you did, no problem. Then you don't have an issue. But if you want to try something different, let's say you want to go to, let's just, let's just do something. Uh, Fuji, Fuji Chrome. Yeah, Fuji Chrome. You even have Instax. Uh, Fuji Chrome Velvia. We'll do Velvia. So Velvia uh, 100. Velvia 100. And this was created by the Decancer team. Now that tells you who created this right here at the bottom. If you create your own, it will be a custom. Um, and here's where you choose. You can choose all the presets, just the Dehancer team. You can choose just your presets that you created, your favorites. There's there's a, a million choices. This thing has almost too many choices. But anyway, so here we are. We're sitting here in uh, Fujifilm. What did I say? Fujifilm. What, what was it again? Velvia 100. So Velvia 100 is the Fuji. I get lost. Uh, and then here's your source exposure compensation. This is why I say it's best not to edit inside of Lightroom first. I would come in here first. As you can see, there's a lot of grain in there. I mean, you can adjust all this stuff. So exposure compensation. I mean, and you can watch your histogram down at the bottom, which is really, really nice. So if you need to pull, make sure if you're kind of one of those that you want to make sure that your histogram's all nice and even, Steven, uh, you can do that. And then you can do that. Temperature compensation. You can adjust the color or the temperature, your tint you know, all the different tints, uh, defringe, if you need to defringe at all, and then defringe radius, you can change your defringe radius. So, uh, and again, you could, you know, you could do all this stuff and, you know, people used to do this inside of a dark room. <laughs> I'm sure I can't even imagine. And then you just click on what you want to use. So you can, what happens is when you first click on whatever you, preset you choose, it has what is active, what is used is on, already ch checked over here. If you want to add to it, you would check it and it would allow you to add. So you could add a little contrast in that sucker, a little gamma, a little gamma gamma, a little Hulk action, uh, color separation. I mean, there's a million choices here, y'all. You could do so many different things with this or you just turn it off. You know, if it wasn't on, then you don't want to use it. Uh, film compression, same thing. It, it's not used in Fuji film, uh, whatever, Velvia 100. I, why can't I remember that? I don't know why I can't remember. Uh, you can uh, expand your black point. You know, you could do all these different little things. Your white point. I mean, it's, it's a million things. Your color mode, Luma versus normal. 
And print the print function is kind of cool. You can set up a print profile. It's really neat. This is really gets detailed, y'all. I mean, this is super, super detailed. You can adjust your tonal contrast, uh, exposure here. You know, there was exposure up in the source, but then there's all, there's just, you know, there's just a million different things. This is for your print. Um, let's go down to, let's see, color heads not used, film grain. Here's, here's the, so you can, you can adjust the size of your grain. You, <laughs> You could just you could just pour it on. I mean, just make it an unusable, just a mess. Or you could pull it back. You know, just pull it back a little bit where the grain is just kind of barely noticeable. I'm starting to use more grain in my photos. Um, resolution, you know, with the grain and shadows, uh, mid tones. I mean, there's just a million choices here. Positive or negative? I like to use negative. I tend to lean towards negative um, when I'm using Fuji. Film, you know, film simulations. I tend to go more towards negative. Uh, but some people like positive, I guess. And then your modes, analog or di digital mode, which digital is experimental at this point. Uh, but uh, you, so you probably want to leave it in there. So there's your your uh, film. I, I've got the burps. I don't know why. So we could we could drop the size down. We could drop the amount down. You could just take it out. Just click it on, and it just it just takes it out. Uh, then whatever's there is there. You know what I mean? Uh, but if you want film grain in there and then halation, you've got background gain. I don't know why I'm singing. Smoothness. I mean, look at that. I mean, there, you could spend probably an hour on one photo. Just to, <laughs> That's why I'm saying this is almost too much. It, it's too much for me. Like personally, I don't know. I think I would set a preset. And then stick to that preset, stick to that look. I would have a really hard time, you know. Um, I don't know. I just have a yeah, and you have a mask mode where I don't I don't know what that does. What does the mask mode do? I don't know what that does. Uh it does it did something. There we go. Okay. Yeah, there's just a million. But but the nice thing is you got your histogram down here, and you can, if you want to go by your histogram, it's right there in front of you. Uh, very very cool thing. Vignetting, same thing. You know, you you could uh, you know most people apply their vignetting in Lightroom or whatever Capture One, uh, but you can do it all right here. You can. I think that you have more control over vignetting in this program. It has. It just seems like there's more control over it than you do with uh, Lightrooms. Look at your histogram moving around. And then your aspect ratio. Look at that. Look how it, you know, oh, this is, vignetting alone is, is just awesome. And again, you can shut completely off or turn it on. And that's that. And then you just hit OK. And then it's going to pop back up into Lightroom, which I had it minimized. So there's your image. It's the same way you use any other plugin in Lightroom Classic. Um, if you use Photoshop or, you know, any other program you have in there, but you just have to physically go in there and set it as a custom. Uh, we'll go back into settings. And you just have to make sure you set it in here. You would choose, and then you have to go to the actual launcher of that program and have it in there. And then there, then you could even go f further. You know, you can adjust it even further inside of, uh, you know, apply a few more. If you're not happy, you know, or, uh, I mean, I mean, the grain looks really nice. I like the way the grain, I might actually use it just to apply grain, but, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a really, really cool, uh, program to use. Those of you, there's a lot of you out there that will probably get a lot of use out of this. Uh, again, if you don't, you know, if you, if you own it, and this is on Nikon, you could use this for Sony, Canon, whatever, whatever you got. Pentax, you know, what, what, whatever you use, whatever you shoot with, there's no wrong answers in, in this equation, but, uh, yeah, it's Dehancer pro or Dehancer photo version 2.3.3. Now I did run into a, a problem. Um, initially I created, I would create my own preset and here you would do that. You would create it. You can name it and the author and all that. And then you would add the preset after you made all your adjustments. Yeah. You'd have to actually have a photo in there to do that. 
But yeah, you, and you can close all these out where they're not expanded. So they're kind of just, you know, kind of like same way you do in Lightroom. You know, same thing. But once you have a photo in there and you create your preset, you would save it. You could add the preset here. The problem I was having is it wasn't remembering that preset the next time I opened it. I did contact customer support. Customer support did say it was a bug in 2.3.3. So if there is a newer version, they probably fixed it or use an older version. That's what they suggested to me was to use a, a, an older version. Uh, so there you have it, Dehancer. I think personally, if it's if it was a situation where I wanted to be creative and I wanted to apply a film, a certain film look to all my photos and I didn't use Fuji, I would definitely invest, I believe, personally. That's just me personally, though. If it's not for you, it's not for you. Give it a shot. Download a trial version. Give it a shot. What's the worst that can happen? So, uh, yeah, that's that's my experience with the Hanser film. Uh, for a Lightroom Classic. So there you have it. Um, it's, you know, the cost uh, could be an issue for some people, but if you're looking for a specific look, if you're if you're looking for a way to tweak your files that you don't, you know, you don't own Fuji and you don't, you never think you're going to shoot Fuji, um, I think this is probably your best bet. Uh, again, price might be too much for some people, but I think if you're looking for results, if you're looking for that specific look, that specific film look from history, I think this is probably your, and you, and you can still use this with Fuji as well. If, there, if, if you're not achieving the look that you want by tweaking your settings, you know, tweaking your film simulations and building your, uh, building up your library of recipes for your Fuji system. And that's what Fuji shooters call them as recipes. Um, then maybe this is for you as well. I mean, this it's something to check into, something to look into. Go check them out, Dehancer. Download it. Um, see what you think. You know, run a couple of files through and see see if it's something that works for you. It might, and it might give you the look that you want to get. And again, if you're already using this for video, you already know how the system works. Um, there you go. You know, uh, it. I'll leave that up to you. I'll leave it up to you whether or not you think this is worth it. Uh, I think it's a cool system. I think it's uh, something that I would probably use if I didn't shoot Fuji, for sure. Um, and I might still use it for Fuji as well, uh, if it's something I'm looking for. Uh, but I've kind of got my own look now, and I've kind of gotten to, gotten to a point where I don't get to I don't I don't get too deep into recipes and all that. I just don't, I just don't. I found the look that I wanted. Uh, without having to go that deep. So <laughs> I'm, I'm good for now. Uh, but anyway, thanks for watching, liking, sharing, subscribing. Hopefully we have more videos for you in the near future. I do have some uh, stuff I want to talk about. I, I still want to talk about the X-T5, uh, the old X-T5 there. Uh, this Tamron 17 to 70 F2.8, actually very, very good lens. And uh, some other, I got the new 23 uh, WR 1.4 from Fuji and the 56 1.2. Um, I, I, I've got a, I've got a bunch of stuff I need to talk about. I need to talk about the XH2S, the new autofocus, uh, enhancements, uh, the new updates, the new app, the new X app, which is worlds better than the old app. And it's probably right now, I would say the best app on the market for any manufacturer. Uh, I've used Sony's I've used Nikon's I've used, uh, I don't think I use Canon if Canon even has one. I, I don't think I use Canon's. But um, it's pretty damn good. It really is good. So we'll, we'll talk about that later. So anyway, Dehancer, uh, check it out if you're looking for some specific film looks. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you again real soon. Bye.